أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته peace and blessings be upon you all dear viewers welcome to Q&A session with Sayyid Muhammad Musawi our sincere apologies for the late start uh, Sayyid Muhammad Musawi has literally just flown in and come straight from the airport to here unfortunately his flight was delayed uh, he's just come back from Hajj as uh, many of you may be aware and uh, of course on your behalf I'd like to thank him for coming in no doubt um, he might be quite tired after the uh, different uh, rituals that are performed on Hajj but alhamdulillah he has insisted on coming in despite this so I'd like to thank him for that and on behalf of all of our viewers I'd like to welcome him Assalamu alaikum Sayyid Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh May Allah bless you and all the brothers and sisters and may Allah grant all of them those who wish to go for Hajj May Allah bless them with Hajj Inshallah And for those who have already performed Hajj may Allah keep the light of Hajj with them for the future of their life Inshallah ta'ala And even the lessons of Hajj which are cannot be limited lessons of Hajj should be carried back from Hajj to the Muslim communities wherever Muslims live. I think if the Hajis who have performed Hajj come back with the lessons from Hajj and the, uh, the, the, the spirit of Hajj to the Muslim community worldwide, it will definitely make a big difference, inshallah. Inshallah. And uh, of course, it's uh, an honor to have to have the opportunity to meet uh, Sayyid when he's just come back from Hajj. As we know, it's a uh, very highly recommended to uh, meet and greet and hug uh, uh, Hajj when uh, one comes back. So uh, we thank Allah for that opportunity. And with regards to this, Said, if we just jump straight into the Q&A, and of course our viewers, unfortunately we only have 45 minutes left today, but as always, if you have any queries, you know that we're here every Sunday. Um, and of course Said is here to answer your questions. While we're waiting for you to call in, uh, I'd like to start off by asking you a question with, related to Hajj. Uh, you've just come back from Hajj, and if we take our mind back some 1,400 plus years ago, the one Hajj, I believe, that the Holy Prophet of Islam, peace and blessed be upon him, and his holy progeny performed, afterwards we know that we had the incident of Ghadir. Can we, could you kindly help us draw some connection between the two, please? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. This is a very important point which unfortunately many Muslims are unaware of. Islam is being victimized by the tyrants and the tyrants wanted Muslims to forget the basic concepts of Islam. The Prophet performed Hajj in the 10th year of Hijrah. And after performing Hajj, he returned back from Mecca to Medina. Com he was accompanied by over 125,000 Muslims, or you can call them companions, because all of them performed Hajj with him. He reached to a place where different groups go to different sites. That place is near what is known today as Juhfa. People who go to different areas, they leave each other near Juhfa. Before they go into different directions, the order came from Allah on the Prophet, O Messenger, بلغ, convey what is being, بلغ ما أنزل إليك من ربك, what is being revealed on you from your Lord. وإن لم تفعل, and if you don't convey this message, فما بلغت رسالته. As if you did not convey any of his messages. Just imagine, after 22 complete years of conveying every message of Islam, the Prophet did not leave anything unconveyed. 
but only 70 days before his departure from this life, Allah the Glorious orders him to convey a message which was revealed on him without conveying it as if he did not convey anything. The Prophet stopped the caravans, ordered those who went ahead to come back, and told people who were late to hurry to join, and then he started giving a speech on the greatest gathering in the history of Islam. The Prophet never gave a speech on such a huge gathering of 125,000 companions, <coughs> men and women. And he told them, Allah is my Lord. And I am the master of all the believers. All accept it. He told them, Alastu awla bil mu'mineen min anfusihim? Am I not more entitled on every believer than himself, on himself? All said, yes. When he took from them that admission that he is more authorized on themselves than their own selves on themselves, he took the hand of Ali ibn Abi Talib and raised it. And he said, for whom so ever? I am the master, Ali is the master. And he said, I am the master, Ali is the master. And he said, for whom so ever? I am the master, Ali is the master. And he said, for whom so ever? I am the master, Ali is the master. This is an incident which no student, I leave aside the scholars, no student can deny. Because all the scholars all agree that this did take place. And if I want to go through the Sunni books, main Sunni books, who mentioned this incident of Ghadir, the announcement of Ghadir, which is the most important announcement in the life of the Prophet, in front of me, Sunan Al-Kubra by Nisa'i, Musannaf Ibn Abi Shayba, Al-Mustadrak Al-Sahihayn, Al-Mu'jam Al-Kabir by Tabarani, Al-Mu'jam Al-Awsat by Tabarani, Al-Mu'jam Al-Saghir by Tabarani, Musnad Abi Ya'la Al-Musli, Sahih Ibn Hibban, Ma'rifat Al-Sahaba by Abi Naim, Musnad al-Shamiyin, Mushkil al-Athar by Tahawi, long list in front of me, 170 important Sunni books who mentioned only books of Hadith, leave aside the books of Tafsir. We have got in every book of Tafsir, every book of Hadith, that is a fact. But tell me today, among Muslims, Millions of Muslims don't know about Ghadir. Don't care because they don't know. And that is a very crucial fact which every Muslim should think about. Let us take the caller now and okay. continue. Yes, I think already we should have already two or three callers, so as uh, always on a Sunday, uh, just so that we can try and get through all, as many questions as we can. We'll take... Um, a series of questions and then I'll ask uh, Sayyid Muhammad Musawi to respond afterwards insha'Allah uh, Assalamu alaikum to our first caller Assalamu alaikum Alaikum wa rahmatullah uh, I have a question and first uh, if, uh, if you guys can explain what is the Hajj Umrah and then I have a with my second question actually it's not a question I want to know, as far as I know, we know Islam as a Rahmat. Okay. It's a religion of the Rahmat. Okay. And the equalness. 
Okay. And uh, we didn't know if Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi came to this world to complete the, you know, everything God, you know, sent, you know, the, all the messengers. And mm -hmm. when the Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi to this world to finish, you know, the, everything and give the book to people and say, hey, this is your, your book and you can't have, you know, see your future from this world. Sure. Uh, can, if I could just uh, ask you for your question, brother. It's just uh, we're running very short on time this evening. Just uh, one, one more thing before you know, I said, Kala. I'm, I'm an Iranian Muslim, Iranian Muslim. In my country, they're killing people with the name of the Allah. They're killing, they're torturing people with the name of the Muhammad. They're can you hear him? I can't hear you. I, I can't. Uh, brother is... Ali and Hussein. Sure. So is, is that your question? Why are, in your opinion, you're saying that in your country, are they, they're killing, uh, in your opinion, in the name of uh, God? Um, so with all due respect, Baba, really, I have, we've got 25 minutes, many people on the line. Uh, I've noted down your question and I'll, you. I'll ask uh, Sayyid Muhammad Musawi to answer you afterwards. Okay. Thank you for calling in. Uh, without any delay, we'll move on to our next caller. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum alaikum salam. Congratulations on his Hajj, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept his Hajj as well. So, um, I'll be very brief with my question. Uh, the Sayyid mentioned the word Mola. Uh, some people say the word Mola means friend. So, what I'd like to know is that how or cannot be, I mean, can it be used in the context of friend here? Because some people say the Holy Prophet, may peace and blessings be upon him and his family, was saying that uh, Imam Ali al Islam is his friend. Would it make logical sense? And the second question is related to, was there other incidents where the Holy Prophet, with peace and blessings be upon him and his family, indicated that Imam Ali -Islam was going to be his successor? Thank okay. You. okay. Thank you very much. I believe that okay. was uh, Sayyid Ali from Slough. Um, uh, thank you for that call. Um, we're probably going to try and limit these calls, actually, so that um, Sayyid actually has en enough time to respond to the, the callers that we do receive. Uh, so I probably won't take too many more. But uh, for now, we'll take maybe one more, and then I'll ask uh, Say to respond. So we move on to our next caller now. Assalamu alaikum. Yeah, uh, Assalamu alaikum, brother Abdurru. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Alaikum salam. Uh, besides congratulating Sayyid uh, for his pilgrimage, I would like to also congratulate you on your manifold ability of conducting this very efficient program, which you've been doing for the last several weeks very successfully. Uh, the question I ask is that uh, why was uh, such an important event took place uh, concerning Ghazir that if that message was not conveyed, nothing else was conveyed by the Holy Prophet? How come the people of Saqifa completely ignored that? Did they suffer from a tem temporarily from some kind of a schizophrenia? And also, 24 years later, Imam Ali announces again that this event took place in connection with me at Ghazir. And there were 11 people who stood up in Medina and said, yes, Ali, that did happen. How come 24 years later they remembered and didn't remember at the time? Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Brother Imran Imam. Uh, unfortunately, I've been told we've got, well, not unfortunately, fortunately we have yet another caller. Um, we'll make this the last for now. Uh, and uh, once again, thank you for calling in. Welcome to the show. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam. If you could just maybe speak up a little bit, the volume... It's probably a technical issue on our side, so if you could help us out by just speaking a little. We lost the call. It seems like... Okay, fine. So we've got three questions so far. The first one was uh, with regards to an Iranian Muslim and talking about, he says, that killings are taking place in his country in the name of... Allah is Was he about Hajj and Amra, I think, first? Yeah, he mentioned some points, but he didn't actually... I didn't hear... Um, him actually pose any questions. I mean, about Hajj and Umrah, Hajj and Umrah, simply, Hajj, in fact, is very simple in its steps, though many people have not understood. Those who have not been to Hajj, they might think that Hajj is a complicated process, but in fact, when they go, they will discover that Hajj is very, very simple, and it will take me maybe a few minutes to explain the steps of Hajj, but I think it is not its time. Let us postpone this question for some other time. But Hajj is very simple. Amra is more simple than Hajj. I hope that when time comes, we can explain that. Uh, next 